Whether you're Team Godzilla or Team Kong, I think we can all agree that nobody's Team Human. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today, I'm going to be ranking the four films of Legendary's MonsterVerse as part of my franchise rankography series. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. So what is a rankography exactly? Well, it's my ranking of a filmography, whether that be a director's output, an actor's appearances, or even an entire franchise. My rankographies are based on personal preference, and I rank movies according to how much I enjoyed them, rather than any specific technical merit or attribute. Remember, this is just my ranking, not THE ranking, so be sure to post your own personal ranking of the MonsterVerse franchise in the comments below. Legendary's MonsterVerse seemed to come out of nowhere. We had had a few other kaiju films in the years leading up to the beginning of the MonsterVerse, things like Cloverfield and Pacific Rim, but this was different, using existing, recognizable properties. Not only was it an American reboot of the Godzilla franchise, but it also pulled in other Toho monsters, as well as King Kong, in order to create a giant shared monster universe. A MonsterVerse. This franchise hasn't been the most consistent when it comes to tone or story, but it has always delivered on its big monster action. I've already reviewed all four of these movies on this channel, so if you want to check those out for some more in-depth thoughts on each of them, I'll put links in the description below, and also link them up in the cards as we go along. Alright, let's get this rankography started. Coming in at number four, Godzilla. It's not often that the first film of a franchise ends up being my least favorite, but here we are. Our introduction to the MonsterVerse is a grim, serious affair. It's a largely humorless experience, opting instead to marinate its story in a blend of human drama and big action set pieces. The human aspects actually comprise the bulk of the story, especially during the first half or so. A lot of time is spent focusing on a single character, setting up some broad stroke relationships and motivations that ultimately get overshadowed in the second half. Despite the human centricity of the story, the monster components are very effective. The length of time spent with the human characters might initially seem a bit baffling, but it actually serves a clever monster movie purpose by offering a slow reveal of Godzilla and heightening our anticipation as a result. We get small glimpses of him for the first hour. Old newsreel footage, a close-up of a giant foot, a tail swishing around a building, and that slow build-up pays off in the second half especially when we hit the big San Francisco showdown. The CGI may be the franchise's worst, but it still looks pretty cool, and the creature design, especially Godzilla's, is excellent. Coming in at number three, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. This third film in the franchise follows in the titan-sized footsteps of the first film. Godzilla is once again our lead monster, but that's not where the similarities end. This film also takes a very serious approach to its story, and spends far more time focusing on the human characters than it should. Luckily, the humans and their story are quite a bit more interesting than in that first movie. It may be more compelling, and the performances are certainly stronger, but it makes the movie feel unnecessarily bloated, because we essentially have a full movie's worth of human plot threads, as well as a whole movie's worth of monster plot threads. Speaking of the monsters, that's where this film really shines. The 2014 Godzilla movie may have given us the Mutos, but King of the Monsters provides us with a whole ensemble of Toho monster favorites. In addition to Godzilla, this movie gives us King Ghidorah, Mothra, and Rodan. We get to see each of these titans show off their powers individually, but in classic Godzilla crossover movie fashion, we get to see them battle. And it's those fights that are easily the most satisfying aspects of this film. The creature designs are stunning, and the battle sequences, especially that Fenway finale, are designed to really showcase the awe-inspiring visuals and bioluminescence of the monsters. Coming in at number two, Godzilla vs. Kong. Even though this is only my second favorite of the franchise, I would argue that it's the film that most effectively delivers on what it promises. This movie promises that Godzilla and King Kong are gonna fight, and that's exactly what happens here, multiple times. It's gloriously absurd, but glorious nonetheless. The fights are long, they're interesting, and we get to see both of these monsters at their prime. 
it should come as no surprise at this point in the franchise, but the visual aspects of this movie are fantastic. The monster CGI is top notch, and the locations in which all of these monster sequences occur are just as impressive. Another impressive thing is that four movies in, Legendary finally realized what we all knew all along. These movies should be about the monsters. Film after film, we've been focusing on the human characters and their various storylines in the midst of a monster attack. This movie finally truly puts the monsters front and center in the story. We still have human components here, but they're mostly used to further the monster storylines. Really, the humans are mostly there to instigate a few things and provide context for what's otherwise happening in the story. This movie doesn't completely solve the problems that plague the franchise, and there's still a degree of inequality when it comes to the film's focus, but both Godzilla and Kong are really given an opportunity to shine here. So that means my number one MonsterVerse movie is Kong Skull Island. I'm not wearing my Team Kong shirt for nothing. This is really the outlier of the franchise, for a number of reasons. First, it's the only film in the franchise to not include Godzilla. Second, it's a period piece. All of the other MonsterVerse movies up to this point have been set in present day, but this one's set in 1973, utilizing historic events like the end of the Vietnam War and the development of the Landsat program, not to mention some pretty great music. But Kong Skull Island is also the tonal outlier too. While it does have some of its big dramatic moments and huge action set pieces, it ditches the grim self-seriousness that pervades most of the rest of the franchise, opting instead for a much lighter, more fun tone. This emerges through humor, which was sorely lacking in the Godzilla-centric films, but also through its blend of genres, which incorporates adventure, war, and expeditionary action, among others. Kong Island is easily the most visually interesting location in the franchise, and forms the basis for some of my favorite shots in the series. As is the case in each of these films, the creature design here is stunning. Kong's huge, and certainly a sight to behold, but he also really feels like part of the environment, both visually and ecosystematically. The other films touch on it too, but this was the first of the franchise to really showcase its themes of planetary and ecosystem balance, and the importance of the Titans for maintaining that balance. Alright, so that's my rankography of Legendary's MonsterVerse franchise. One giant reptile, one giant primate, and one giant shared universe. What does your ranking look like? I'd love to see some reasoning for your order, so be sure to post it in the comments below. Remember, I've already reviewed all four of these movies, so you can check those videos out if you want some more in-depth discussion of each, as well as my ratings, pros and cons, and even tailored film recommendations. And if you're interested in buying any of these movies, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information out of this rankography, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe or add it to see more videos like this, as well as movie reviews. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies, the way life should be.